good afternoon i welcome you to this session of ic engineering gas turbine and today we will be discussing about the classification of nozzles then of course we will be discussing about the requirement of nozzles then uh, we will be discussing about ignition system and while we will be discussing about ignition system we will try to discuss the battery ignition system now before i go to discuss about the you know classification or types of nozzles which are used for uh, internal combustion engine and but uh, i would like to discuss about why nozzle is required and if we try to recall that for the compression ignition engines air is taken through intake manifold and uh, fuel is directly injected into the engine cylinder. So, towards the end of the compression stroke when pressure and temperature of the compressed air is uh, you know rather becomes higher then fuel is injected and the high pressure rather uh, pressure and temperature of the compressed air at the end of the compression stroke is sufficient to ignite the fuel which is being injected and then entire I mean the combustion process will start. We also have discussed about the carburetor and we have seen that for the spark ignition engine there is an important part which is carburetor which is used to supply stoichiometric that is chemically, uh, chemically correct air fuel ratio and not only that the carburetor is also uh, important because we need to supply homogeneous mixture of air and fuel. So, the homo to ensure that the charge which is supplied into the cylinder should be homogeneous and also chemically correct. So, these two important uh, objectives uh, if we need to ensure that the engine will get chemically correct air fuel ratio as well as the amount of air fuel which is being supplied into the cylinder will be homogeneous uh, that to ensure these two objectives carburetor is used. But again if we try to recall that we have discussed carburetor almost is an obsolete part nowadays, but uh, only a few engines are having this carburetor, but in most of the cases fuel is supplied only air is taken through intake manifold and air is compressed and then fuel is supplied through fuel nozzle. So, today we will go to discuss to rather today we will be discussing about the you know nozzle. So, we need to know why nozzle is important and then knowing the importance of this part we will try to classify it depending upon the requirement and depending upon their functionalities. Now, uh, we know from our undergraduate uh, you know knowledge that nozzle is a mechanical uh, device which is used to you know increase the velocity of the fluid and uh, at the cost of the you know, drop of the pressure. Now, uh, this nozzle of course, just I would like to discuss 2 3 minutes before I go to discuss about the classification. Uh, when we talk about rather when we you know are thinking to supply nozzle separately into the engine cylinder. Of course, we need to ensure that the fuel should not be injected into the cylinder in a droplet pattern rather we need to ensure that the fuel should be you know injected and that injection you know process that will be controlled by the fuel nozzle of course and then to ensure that we will have a sufficient spray pattern fuel should be supplied every corner of the you know engine cylinder and also that that uh, if the fuel is having you know liquid kind of liquid droplet then maybe all the fuel cannot take part in the combustion and there should be uh, there will be other problems. So, the objective is to increase the velocity of the fuel and so that fuel can be supplied into the cylinder uh, with a desired spray pattern and also 
the fuel can be fragmented into smaller and smaller uh, droplets so that the you know uh, if combustion can be ensured to have uh, in a smooth uh, manner. Now, so uh, that is the objective that fuel should be supplied uh, with a you know desert spray pattern and also the fuel droplets should be fragmented into uh, the smaller droplets so that the wastage of fuel can be prevented and the combustion will be the uh, will be smooth. Now, uh, and this part is you know done uh, using this fuel nozzle. Now, we will write the so again I am telling we will be discussing about the SI engine injection system in a greater detail may be uh, in one of my uh, next lecture, but uh, today we will be discussing about the uh, CI, CI engine injection system where we have already seen that nozzle is an important part and spark plug is not required at all. So, for the SI engine injection system so far we have discussed about the carburetor, carburetor and carburetion is important because carburetor is needed to supply homogeneous mixture of chemically correct air fuel ratio. Now, if we talk about CI engine injection system then nozzle is an important part. So, today we will discussing about CI engine injection system. Now, so nozzles are important for CI engine injection system and right. So, if we try to recall the schematic that and uh, this is the intake valve, this is exhaust valve. So, exhaust gas will go out through this path and air will be taken through intake manifold into the cylinder. So, we will have one injection nozzle that is the injection you know uh, and the objective of this nozzle is to supply you know desert fuel into the cylinder with a desert spray pattern. And desert spray pattern that will be characterized by the you know spray depth and the spray cone angle that we will write uh, that we will discuss briefly. So, this is the fuel nozzle. Now, of, of, of question is if we do not if we if we you know uh, do not provide nozzle then only we can supply fuel in a droplet pattern, but supplying fuel into the cylinder in a droplet pattern will have a few you know problematic um, uh, you know features that we need to know that combustion liquid droplet if we put you know if rather if we inject fuel in the form of liquid droplet that that because of the inertia of the liquid droplet it is very difficult that the liquid droplet can be you know uh, dispersed into the entire combustion chamber that is the you know at the top of the piston face that is the you know clearance volume. And not only that, 
the fuel droplet uh, I mean one part of the droplet might take part in the combustion while other part may not. So, there will be you know kind of uh, heterogeneous combustion. So, there will be different you know problematic features that we will discuss uh, later, but for the timing we should know that the objective of the nozzles rather objective of having nozzle in, C, in a CI engine injection system is to uh, supply fuel with a desert spray pattern and, and, and to atomize the fuel that means to break the fuel to fragment the fuel into a number of smaller fuel droplets. So, now we should know what are the basic objectives. So, basic objectives that is what I said that number one to atomize the fuel atomize the fuel means we need to break the fuel liquid fuel uh, liquid droplet into smaller and smaller uh, fuel droplets. Number two that is again I am writing that uh, to ensure desert spray pattern because uh, then okay fine I am I have written that desert spray pattern which is characterized by by number uh, rather a spray cone angle B, I know spray penetration depth, spray penetration length, so this is L, this is theta and average size distribution. In this context, I would like to say so, if we talk about say this is fuel nozzle and uh, this is you know placed at the uh, top of the engine, now uh, fuel will be injected. So, this will be as I said fuel will be injected with a desert spray pattern and so this angle that is known as theta and also the length this L is the spray penetration length and the average size distribution. So, these three important points we should keep in mind that desert spray pattern that we have used I told many times today that the objective of the fuel nozzle is to ensure that the fuel should be injected into the cylinder with a desert spray pattern which will be characterized by this spray cone angle that is what is very important spray penetration length or depth and the average size distribution. Now see if the then why this cone angle and penetration length is important. I will be discussing maybe uh, in a I mean with uh, in a greater detail today, but for the timing we should know that when we are injecting fuel into the cylinder of course, you know at a later stage of the you know uh, engine operation. So, engine will start and it will you know continue to run and at a later stage of the engine operation if we start injecting fuel we need to ensure that the fuel which is being supplied that fuel should not reach at the cylinder wall there will be problem. Second thing if the supply of fuel by the nozzle is localized then again it will be problem because combustion will be localized and uh, that combustion will lead to you know kind of uh, different kind of uh, you know uh, problems for the engine operation. So, to ensure that spray should not be localized and at the same time spray should not be so you know erratic 
so you know kind of I can say abrupt so that the fuel should strike the cylinder wall. So, to ensure the cone angle is very important as well as the length or the spray penetration depth is also important for the fuel injection system and accordingly we need to design the fuel, design the nozzle so that these three objectives or uh, these two objectives will be satisfied. Okay. Now, uh, if we go to next slide, so we have understood that the objective of the nozzles and then we have uh, discussed about why, what will be the, now we need to discuss about what will be the problem if we, you know, if we, when we are supplying, when fuel is, you know, supplied, uh, fuel is being supplied into the cylinder by a nozzle and then the supplied, no, supplied fuel, if the supplied fuel strikes the cylinder wall as well as if the you know you know uh, fuel supply is localized. So, I will write now question is so, but uh, uh, if I go to my previous slide then I can say, uh, but uh, that fuel is supplied here. Now, if the fuel uh, nozzle is not functioning properly, then either nozzle is not able to you know develop spray or nozzle is not you know and you know the spray may be nozzle is able to develop or you know to uh, you know form spray but but the spray pattern is very erratic or abrupt and such that 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 the part of the fuels i mean a part of the fuel will be you know uh, supplied to the corner areas and uh, some portion, some part of the fuel will be st will be striking the uh, walls of the cylinder. Now, question is in that case, rather in those cases, what will happen? So, I am writing now. So, say um, when fuel is supplied So, this is nozzle and this is the engine cylinder. Now, say this, this pressure is P1 and this pressure is P2. So, that is pressure uh, in the nozzle. Uh, of course, the uh, fuel pressure is P1 and pressure in the cylinder is P2. Now, of course, what will happen? So, if the now question is, I am writing that atomization does not start. from the place rather I can say from exactly at the from exactly rather does not start exactly at the you know uh, exit from the nozzle. nozzle and some distance and what will what will happen? So, atomization should not start rather will not start exactly at the exit of the nozzle and some distance a liquid cylinder. is coming out that is what we can see from the schematic. So, atomization will not start exactly at the exit and we will get kind of liquid uh, cylinder from the uh, as if a liquid cylinder is coming out. Now, what will happen if this P2 is less than P1 then, then this undulation 
that it is now you know bulging. So, this undulation will be increased but surface tension force will oppose the development of undulation will oppose the undulation or development of undulation. Right. So, this is second point. The first point is attenuation should not rather does not does not start exactly at the exit from the nozzle, some distance a liquid cylinder as if a liquid cylinder is a coming out, right. Rather, I can say for some distance a uh, liquid cylinder is coming out, uh, and if P2 less than P1, then undulation will be increased while so, now what I would like to discuss this aspect over here. So, depending upon the pressure difference we can I mean we can design nozzle in such a way that depending upon the pressure difference P1 and P2 we know what will be the pressure at the inside the cylinder during the time of injection and accordingly we need to design that will be designed that will be developed by the fuel pump. So, before fuel nozzle there will be another that is another mechanical device that is fuel pump. So, the pump will be able to develop that pressure P1. Now, P1 and P2 depending upon the value of P1 and P2 this undulation can be controlled. Now, undulation will be increased if P2 less than P1 and that is of course, uh, uh, in, uh, happening, but surface tension force will try to oppose the development of the undulation. So, that means, we need proper selection of the nozzle so that so that this P1 depending upon so that, that means surface tension force will continuously trying to prevent this undulation while the pressure defense will try to develop this undulation. So, now we need to know what will be the pressure drop and before which we can uh, ensure that whether we will get a proper shape of the you know liquid fuel, proper shape of the spray or proper uh, depth of the spray pattern. So, now these are the important aspect we should know. So, so far we have understood that nozzle is fully responsible to supply fuel in the form of a spray pattern, in the form of the spray pattern and while we are uh, talking about, while we are claiming that okay, we will get desert spray pattern and which will be characterized by the spray cone angle, penetration depth and as the and average size distribution. So, now I am writing that the you know no, design. So, the design aspect of the nozzle. So, design aspect of the nozzle. So, that is why I have taken this small example that P1 and P2 this pressure drop because we know for a particular engine we know what is the pressure at the you know almost at the end of the compression stroke and accordingly we need to develop fuel pump so that P1 will be developed. Although, and if uh, we also know the uh, you know fuel we are, which is being supplied, so surface tension that is also the property. Now we can uh, we know this a priori. Now, considering those important, I can say you know uh, aspects, we can design the fuel nozzle. So, what are the points we need to consider? We need to keep in mind when while we are design, uh, designing a fuel nozzle. So, number one right that uh, the design will be such that the liquid fuel, liquid fuel forced through the nozzle will be broken off into the fine droplets as it passes through the combustion chamber.
that means while we are injecting fuel you know the pressure p2 that is the pressure uh, of course some part of the fuel will be injected combustion will start because of what again uh, pressure will be increased temperature will be increased so we know that and fuel injection is not that it will take some finite time now question is so uh, knowing this pressure inside the cylinder we need to design fuel uh, need to design nozzle accordingly so that the fuel which is being which is forced to the nozzle should be you know will be broken up into the finer or and finer droplets as it passes through the combustion chamber. Uh, why this is important? This is important. So, this is I am writing this is important in the first page in the first page in obtaining proper mixing of fuel and air in the chamber combustion chamber. So, if we can ensure that the fuel particle the fuel liquid fuel you know is broken up to uh, I am broken into number of you know finer droplets then we can ensure that the fuel will be fuel air mixing will be proper or efficient and which is important for this smooth, com smooth and efficient combustion. Uh, second, so the first thing we have discussed second this is another important point. Uh, the fuel must be you know properly distributed distributed or dispersed dispersed in the desert that is what I was talking about desert areas of the you know chamber right and in this phase injection pressure that is P1 P2 is fixed injection pressure uh, density of air in the cylinder physical properties of the fuel and of course the nozzle design become uh, important factors important factors right so we have written injection pressure density of air in the cylinder physical properties of the fuel and nozzle design. So, and nozzle design. So, the fuel must be properly dispersed into the air first phase that we need to ensure fuel should be you know broken up into finer droplets essentially to ensure proper mixing second part should have a desired spray pattern. So, that I mean we can supply fuel we can spray fuel in the desert area of the chamber and when we talk about rather when we are you know talking about that desert areas of the chamber that in that case injection pressure density of the air in the cylinder physical properties of the fuel uh, that is what we have discussed surface tension we will try to oppose the you know undulation 
So, surface tension will try to oppose the uh, desired spray pattern and also other things like you know fuel viscosity and all these things becomes important factor. Now, question is so I am writing one by one. See if we talk about injection pressure now if P1 becomes higher of course, it will have will have a better spray pattern. So, if injection pressure higher the pressure better will be dispersion and penetration depth. So, if P 1 if P 1 is high then dispersion will be high and also penetration depth will be high. So, that is done. So, next we will go to discuss about that is true density of air in the if I try to go back density of air in the cylinder then the role is rather I can say higher the density of the air right. So, better the density density of the compressed air compressed air then that means, if the density is high it will try to create higher resistance to the fuel. So, that it will try to have a better dispersion. So, density of the air in the cylinder is also an important uh, parameter to control the dispersion. So, better the density of the compressed air resistance and resistance you know offered uh, I can say uh, I can say greater resistance greater resistance offered uh, uh, offered uh, and the dispersion becomes higher. That means, when fuel is being injected into the cylinder, if the density of the compressed air is high, then I mean resistance offered by the air to the uh, you know injected fuel will be high and dispersion will be higher that is the case. Now, uh, you know also as I said physical properties you know uh, like surface tension. liquid viscosity liquid viscosity hmm. uh, so this i have discussed that higher the surface tension surface tension will try to oppose the you know bulging so dispersion will be high and viscosity is also you know uh, into the better disp also will lead to the better dispersion of the fuel now finally so, as I said, so surface tension effect I have already discussed surface tension and viscosity. So, these two things, uh, these two uh, parameters also will have uh, these two important properties will also have uh, a role to play on the dispersion. And finally,
that is very important that I can say the you know uh, very important that uh, I have written over here that is the uh, nozzle design. So, nozzle design. Now, nozzle should be designed in such a way that it must spray fuel in such a manner as to minimize the fuel amount of fuel in other the quantity of fuel reaching the cylinder wall. So, that means, you know design will be uh, I mean such that the sp spring uh, uh, fuel into the chamber in such a manner as to minimize minimize the minimize the quantity of fuel quantity of fuel reaching uh, the surrounding walls surroundings wall. Why it is important? That means, we need to ensure the design in such a way that the when the spray rather fuel is coming in the form of a spray pattern, the amount or the quantity of fuel that will strike the surrounding wall will be less. Why? This is very important and uh, I can say that uh, say we have so say this is the fuel now if the fuel strikes at the surroundings wall what will happen so if the fuel the if the if the quantity of fuel which is striking the surrounding wall surroundings wall is high then what will happen now uh, because of the you know condensation then what will happen the you know uh, uh, any fuel the any amount of fuel so say this is striking this is striking this is striking this is striking so any amount i can say any amount striking the walls of the cylinder tends to decompose producing carbon deposit. Unpleasant you know order and a smoky exhaust and a smoky exhaust. So, this is the another important point that if we design fuel nozzle in such a way that it is spraying fine, we are getting finer spray pattern fine, but it at the at the same time substantial amount of fuel is striking this you know cylinder walls. What will happen? The amount of fuel, any amount of fuel striking the walls of the cylinder tends to decompose. I mean because of the condensation, I mean I can say uh, the fuel reaching the striking wall will again there will be there, there will be many thing I mean it will decompose because of this there will be carbon deposit as I said the fuel which is striking the wall because of the condensation may be again it will form liquid droplet combustion will not be there 
unpleasant odor you know smell will be there and the exhaust will be smoky. So, these parameters are very important to know that I mean then nozzle is nozzle should be designed you know I can say in a proper way so that the problem related to uh, the, uh, you know uh, you know this um, striking of the uh, striking of fuel at the wall uh, can be prevented. If we cannot prevent this then we will get in fact if we try to if we have seen that in, in many you know in our daily life that sometimes a vehicle is running and a smoky exhaust is there. In that case it is very you know it is very true that every combustion is not efficient and also sometimes we get unpleasant smell and that is also because of the uh, you know uh, poor combustion and uh, the other problem is that the when the fuel is tracking the wall it will decompose it will get carbon particle and that that carbon particle will come out and it, it will try to uh, with the combustion gases and it will try to create the pollution. So, from different perspective it is very important to ensure that the design of the nozzle should be proper. So, now time has come to discuss about the type of nozzle we should consider. So, now types of nozzle that is very important uh, uh, rather I can say classification of nozzles uh, I can say classification of nozzles that means we have understood till now we have understood the basic objectives and to, say, to ensure the basic objectives what are the important thing we need to know that is the uh, we have discussed you know uh, injection pressure, density of the air in the cylinder, fuel properties and finally, we have discussed about the fuel you know nozzle design. Now, uh, so while we are designing nozzle these four important points should be uh, considered. Okay. Now, we should know what are the classification, what are the different types of nozzles you know used for the CI engine, CI engine injection system. Uh, there are uh, different types, number one is you know this is called single nozzle, number two is multiple nozzle. Number 3 is pintle nozzle. So, these are the you know uh, single single nozzle means single orifice nozzle, multiple orifice nozzle. So, I am writing multiple orifice nozzle, single orifice nozzle. So, quickly we will see what you know what is the you know basic difference between these three nozzles. Now, uh, uh, so, these are the different types of nozzles which are used for the car, you know CI engine injection system. System Most common type is the simple orifice nozzle and uh, you know what we can see that the simple sorry single orifice nozzle So, single orifice nozzle uh, we have single orifice so this is so this single orifice right. Uh, so, basically uh, single uh, drilled hole and uh, through which fuel is through which fuel uh, passes into the combustion chamber. Now, multiple orifice nozzle 
if I try to draw the schematic, then we will have So, so this is multiple drilled hole. Uh, so, the contains several such drilled passageway through which fuel, you know, passes into the combustion chamber. So, this is multiple drill hole, single orifice, this is single drill hole. And finally, an important type is that is pintle type that is pintle type and so, you know uh, the pintle nozzle consists, if I try to draw the schematic, right so this is small plunger right and so what what we can see from the schematic that the this pintle nozzle you know you know is having a small plunger the, there is a movement of the small plunger and now the movement of the small plunger control the gap between you know what you can see the you know uh, passage through which fuel is supplied. So, fuel is supplied through this and through this. So, the movement of the plunger which is controlled of course, now the movement of the plunger other at a given time the position of the plunger you know controls the you know fuel passage uh, pathway fuel passage through which uh, fuel is supplied into the combustion chamber right. Now, question is uh, the movement of the plunger of course, control the fuel uh, movement rather I can say fuel injection into the cylinder. Uh, single orifice and multiple orifice nozzle which are used basically for non turbulent type. So, I can writing the single orifice and multiple orifice. So, this is the pintle type nozzle, we have a small plunger that is pintle, uh, the plunger is having uh, reciprocating I mean uh, it, it can move between the you know uh, I can say the passage. Now, the movement of the plunger controls the fuel that will be injected into the cylinder that means, the movement of the cylinder control the passage through which fuel is being supplied into the cylinder. Single and multiple orifice, single orifice or multiple orifice, orifice nozzles are used, these nozzles are used you know for non turbulent type combustion chamber. The orifices the or, you know I can say the orifices of these you know uh, nozzles, orifices of these nozzles are very small and subjected to clogging
by the carbon particle. So, orifices of these nozzles are very small and subjected to clogging, uh, clogging of the carbon by the carbon particle and because of this clogging what will happen you know nozzle will start malfunctioning after uh, certain uh, period of you know its use. So, um, uh, it may either malfunctioning or it may completely stop the function functionality. Now, question is the pintle type nozzle what you can see from the schematic the movement of the plunger may be we cannot prevent the deposition of the carbon particle. Uh, so, but the you know movement of the plunger will try to clear the deposition that is there. So, from that perspective pintle type nozzle is advantageous. So, we cannot prevent the clogging of the carbon particle that is what we have seen that carbon particle will be there. So, because of this you know clogging these single orifices single orifice or multiple multiple orifices nozzle you know uh, will start malfunctioning after certain period of its use and also can stop you know functioning completely. But pintle type nozzle is having rather it is having an advantageous feature because the movement of the plunger will try to clear the carbon deposition in the fuel passage. This pintle type nozzle which is used which is used you know uh, with turbulent type com with turbulent type combustion chamber and not only that there are a few advantageous feature. So, this is used I can write uh, uh, this pintle type nozzle utilize utilize low you know injection pressure this this type utilize low injection pressure number 2 uh, as I said less you know susceptible to clogging and uh, maintenance I can say is reduced. That means, uh, carbon deposition will be there that we cannot we cannot prevent, but since single and multiple multiple orifice type nozzle they are having very small drill hole. So, a deposition of the carbon particle will try to clog the you know uh, passage fuel passage fuel pathways and either it will start malfunctioning or it will stop functioning completely. On the other hand pintle type nozzle I mean uh, which is used for the turbulent type com combustion chamber and it utilizes in low injection pressure that is very obvious because I mean uh, uh, the uh, deposition is cleared by the movement of the plunger and less susceptible to clogging since less susceptible to clogging the maintenance is reduced. So, these are the different types of nozzle that we have discussed today. To summarize today's discussion we have discussed about the you know requirement of nozzle why nozzle is important for the CI engine, CI engine injection system. We will also see that nozzles are also important uh, for the SI, SI engine injection system uh, for rather modern SI engine injection system. Then while we are talking about nozzles then of course, what are the different objectives that uh, should be you know uh, taken into account while designing the nozzle that is what we have discussed and then we have seen that if we can properly design the fuel nozzle uh, to 
so you know fulfill the objectives that is to ensure the in proper spray angle, proper spray depth and also the average size. Then what are the different types of nozzle which are commonly used for the you know CI engine injection system that we have discussed. Single orifice type, multiple orifice type and pintle type. Single orifice and multiple orifice type nozzles are having you know kind of uh, I can say it's very small drill hole. So, uh, carbon deposition we cannot prevent because of the combustion and uh, inefficient combustion and that is what we have discussed that the, part, the portion of the fuel which is striking the cylinder wall will decompose will leads to carbon deposition. A small part of the carbon particle will come during the exhaust stroke and that will they will you know try to clog the uh, fuel passes of the nozzle. Now, now the single and orif multiple orifice nozzles are you know prone to you know that carbon uh, deposition and the deposition or clogging of the carbon part clogging by the carbon particle may because of this uh, uh, carbon particle deposition the single orifice type or multiple orifice type nozzle start malfunctioning or sometimes they completely stop working. Then pintle type nozzle which is uh, having a small plunger. Now, because of the movement of the plunger we can what we can do we can by the movement of the plunger we can control the amount of fuel which is being injected not only that the movement of the plunger will try to clear the carbon particle which is being deposited and therefore, the maintenance is reduced. So, with this I stop my discussion today and we will discuss in my we will discuss in the next class. Thank you.